Good evening. Hi, and welcome, everybody. Welcome to tonight's presentation at Discipline Trading Strategies. This is Paul, your host. How's this sound? Can you guys hear me okay? August 9th, purely an educational evening. As always, we're going to talk about preparing for the day as a day trader or preparing for the week as a swing or longer term trader. This will probably be posted to the educational section eventually, not to the events page if you go looking for it on the, uh, on the DTS Free Stuff page. So let's get right to it. I'm going to make the bold prediction again that will be done early tonight. But every time I make that prediction, I end up being wrong. I don't think I've ever finished early. I always finish on time, though. I mean, I mean, very rarely are we past. I don't like staying past an hour, so we're almost always done an hour. A couple of nights I had to call an exception because you guys asked so many questions. So let's get to it. Preparing for the week of trading. Feel free to jump in with any questions anytime. It's an open forum. Feel free to, you know, don't don't feel like you have a dumb question. There's probably a lot of people who would like to, you know, hear your question and get the answer to it. As I get going here, I do want to point out, I'll pull up the first slide here that you saw in your email. This, this is a good part subjective. I mean, I'm showing you what I do to prepare. I like to day trade. I like to long-term invest. I'm going to show you both the preparations for that. For those of you who come to the Monday Night Bi-Weekly, you see kind of a lot of the preparation ready for what I do for that. But I'm go, what I want to go through in detail, what I do for, to prepare for day trading. I think preparation is really the key. Preparation and organization is really the key. You know, once you know what you're looking for, naturally, the whole first step is to know how to read a chart, to know what you want to do in the market, and to be able to manage and make money from your positions. But to do that, I feel you have to be very organized from day to day, from week to week, to stay on top of everything so you have the best opportunities there when they are ready. So we're going to look at two different procedures. Number one for day trading or swing trading. To me, in my view, really the preparation for day trading and swing trading is the same. It's even though the swing trade, you know, you're, you're focused on those daily charts and you're going to be holding for a couple, three days. Part of my day trading would always include looking at that daily chart anyhow. So I'm going to kind of find both when I'm looking. And when I am preparing for the day, day trading, I'm always also keeping a list of those daily charts that are nice. Number one, I put swing trades in the letter. Number two, I may, may occasionally do it myself. And number three, the daily charts can also provide great day trading opportunities. What could be better? Remember, the, the power comes from up above, right? Um, you and me and us piddly little day traders, we're not moving the market. We're just playing around with the charts that are there. But the power coming from above is, is not on an intraday time frame. You know, the, the big funds are not buying a 15-minute chart and selling 12 minutes later. The, the big power is coming from the, the funds when they go to buy. So if you get a daily chart that's in an uptrend, um, inside of that daily uptrend leg, there's going to be nice day trading opportunities. Not always. Sometimes a nice daily chart is a terrible setup for day trading, but sometimes it's nice. So I like to have that daily chart. And I, I don't want to get into the, the, the techniques that much here, but the daily chart naturally also plays a part in evaluating any day trade. Naturally, your day trading you may say, hey, I'm not swing trade, I don't care about the daily chart. But to be a good trader, you have to understand the correlation of four time frames. And the daily chart is involved in your analysis even as a day trader. So I just want to point that out because as we go through this and talk about being organized, that, that chart is on the screen when you're day trading, even though you're not swing trading. The, the time frames are weekly, daily, hourly, and then five 15 minute chart, whatever intraday time frames you want to go down to. So it's really kind of, and, and as a day trader, you know, as a swing trader, the weekly chart's critical. As a day trader, the weekly chart's not really critical. But the way I describe it is sometimes in order to understand the daily chart, you have to take a peek at the weekly chart. And that may or may not make sense to you right now. I don't think I really have an example of it. But when I, on my day trading screen, I keep the weekly chart actually behind the daily. So it's not taking up any real estate. And I just kind of click on it when I want to see it. So I have my, my, my daily chart on top and the weekly chart just kind of peeks out there. And if I want to see the weekly for some reason, I'll just click on it. So it's not like it's a critical chart for day trading, but sometimes it is key to see what that daily chart's really saying. So those are the, the, that's kind of the little rundown for day trading, what we'll be looking at. And the long-term investing, you, you know, you, you, you may be looking – it depends how active you are as a swing trader. Of course, you're looking every day, but as a longer term investor, maybe you're looking a couple, three times a week, maybe once a week. Really depends on what your situation is, how active you are, how many things you want to hold, where you are in terms of your account being full or not full. So it depends. We'll be looking at monthly, weekly, daily, hourly charts. So 
it's very similar, just the charts are a little one step higher that you'd be looking for. As a longer term trader, you may, you're, you're looking to hold for weeks or months, or sometimes it could be years. Right now, we're not in that time frame where we're looking for years for the average thing. You, you go back to you know 2010, um, you're holding for 10 years. Uh, we got into 2021, 22, and I knew we were near the top and I wasn't planning on you know getting positions that I'm gonna hold for, for years. So we're just kind of more of a holding for weeks type of thing. Some of my positions maybe lasted four or five months. And then it was all short. And right now we're kind of both, but this is still not the time to be backing up the truck for those long-term things you're gonna hold for many years. We gotta wait for that next opportunity. So different you know, times to be holding stuff. Prepare for the day. So it's the, number one, the first half here at the top, day trading, swing trading. Prepare for the day trading or swing trading. So here's the, here's the routine I go through. I start off looking at about 800 to 1100 daily charts manually. I like to go through things manually. I have a couple slides about this. I'll talk about it as we go. I, I, I have some pre-canned scans. I don't really rely on them. I, I cannot write or trust a scan to see everything that I'm looking for. I look at sort of meaning by manually, what I do is I just go through the charts and click on them one at a time. Boom, 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 boom. To do that, you need to start by saying, okay, well, how many charts would you look at? What's your, what's your universe is what we call it. That's the total number of charts for that time frame you would ever look at. So my universe, the way I, I scan is that when I look at daily charts for day trading, swing trading, I use a dynamic scan. I use a product called TC2000, I'll show you in a minute. but you don't have to do that again. A lot of today will be kind of a subjective look at what we do. I'm not gonna ask you guys a lot of questions. This is kind of a quick little training session for what we do, so feel free to ask if you have any questions. Again, TC2000 is not something you have to get. I've used it since I started trading, unbelievably. It's just something I got right away and stuck with. And the reason I use it is because you can scan extremely fast. It downloads the charts to your computer and unless you look at three stocks per second, if you wanted to, which you can do on your big platforms, the big platforms are slow. You're lucky if you pull up one chart a second, every second and a half. So since I use that, uh, my universe is not a static universe. It's not like I plug in 1100 stocks and say, here, look at these. Rather, I do a scan. So every time I open it up, it opens my PL universe, Paul Lang universe, and it automatically pulls out price over 250, volume over 800,000 shares a day. and I also put in a requirement to eliminate ETFs, the exchange traded funds, because there are tons of them in there and I don't want to keep looking at the ETFs. You know, I don't want to, I, I'm already looking at, you know, the stocks I want to look at. I don't want to look at the ETFs, which would be actually looking at sectors. We'll talk about that later. The way to do it, one way to eliminate ETFs if you're running a scan is to require the stock has earnings greater than or equal to zero or earnings less than or equal to zero. And if you require earnings, it eliminates the ETFs. If we don't use these though, what other platforms preferably would you? Well, Chris, the, the key would be to, to, to Google a platform that downloads um, the stocks to your, to your computer. That's what makes it fast. Most of your big name platforms won't do that. So again, you have to kind of decide how key it is for you to be quick. I would not want to do this on my regular platforms because they're way too slow for me. Um, maybe you have a smaller universal we'll talk as we go. You may not want to do everything I do, right? Chris, but that's the key is that it downloads your platform. I, I know there were some platforms used to do it. You probably want to get something like TC2000. I mean, this is 30 bucks a month. I don't get the full version. Like, I don't use TC2000 to trade. I don't use it for my main charting stuff. Uh, I'm on version seven. It's like, it's, it's just the, the static, download charts, download charts, look at them. That's all it is. So look for something where it downloads them to your computer and then you can go really fast with it. But wherever you want to look at them, the point is I look at a bunch of daily charts and these daily charts that have nice setups can be something that I use for day trading the next day, it makes it to a list. Could be the things you want to be using for swing trading, obviously. Now, this is what I use you may want to vary that. If you're looking at stocks over 800, you know, a million shares a day, somewhere in there, you're gonna get about seven, 800,000 stocks, somewhere in there. If you increase the volume to 1.2 million, you're probably gonna get about 600 stocks. So it, it depends on what minimum volume you want. For day trading, typically, you know, most of the time I have to have like 2 million shares, but since some of these could be swing trades or some of them, you know, could have better volume that day, 
I usually scan down a little bit lower. So that's up to you what you want to do. Also, price is just a subjective thing. I, I don't want to be looking at baby stocks most of the time, so, you know, draw the line somewhere, okay? So a universe of stocks, daily charts, I go through and scan, say, 800 to 1,000 stocks every night. This is what TC2000 looks like. I use that because it's fast. Again, I'm not recommending it. I don't care what you use. doesn't matter to me. I'm just trying to share some information with you. Very, very fast. Three stocks per second. Bam, bam, bam. You can go that quick and it pops them right up because it's on your computer. All right? So there it is. Everything else about this stinks. <laughs> they, they, they don't do candlesticks right. Their comments are like they're total morons. I think they stopped making comments years ago. I don't even look. Their comments are like total morons. Uh, they, they push the proprietary indicators that are complete crap. But if you want fast charts, there's some fast charts. Secondly, the second thing I do, no, thank you for bringing that up. That's a good question, John. When I'm on, when I'm doing this scan, when I use this platform, TC2000, I'm looking at one time frame at a time. Now, if I look at more than one time frame, I do have to go slower. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. Here, I'm looking at one time frame. So every day, I look at 1,100 charts on this daily chart. That's all I'm looking for, just the daily. So you're right. Other time frames could be screwed up. But if I find great daily charts, remember, it's not like I'm going to trade it. It goes on a list, and then I look at it on all the time frames. And then, as you know, the next morning in the room, I go through that list, and I eliminate probably, you know, I probably just right off the rip eliminate half the stocks on there. When I go through and look, I use the same platform to go through then once or twice a week. I look at them on a weekly time frame. And I also use this for the monthly time frame. So I use this for all my daily, weekly, monthly scanning one time frame at a time. Okay. Now, a good point to bring up, when I look at 1,100 stocks, how many do you think I flag? Some of you know, the, look at 1,100 stocks. How many do you think I, I put a little asterisk by saying possibly remotely interesting? Yeah, about 30. That's it. That's it. And half of those I probably eliminate the next day. And, you know, nine out of 10 that are left, I, I don't make the hot list. They're just something on the screen. So very, very, you know, filtering down process, really looking for what it is I want to look for. And let me save you the question, what am I looking for? Well, that's a whole different topic. That's how do you trade, right? That's what, what I look for may not be what you want to look for. I look for things I teach in the DTS seminar program. I look for very specific things. That's not the point of tonight. The point is whatever you look for, be organized. Here's some ways to do it. So there's, so there's the first list, the daily chart list. The second thing I do then is go through and look at a list of 360 minute charts, hourly charts. So this is different. This is now on my trading platform, okay? And this is a, a predetermined list of 300 stocks. About every six weeks, I go through and I redo the list. Now, all I do for this list is nothing fancy. I just take the 300 highest volume stocks in the market. And then from that 300, I eliminate some things I don't like. Like there, typically in that list, there's too many China stocks. They all trade the same. I don't want four. I don't want 50 China stocks. There's too many oil stocks, so I eliminate some of them. There's some duplicates like CMCSA and CMCSK, UAA, UA. They're duplicate stocks, so I just eliminate some stuff, and I end up with you know whatever's left over, 260 stocks. Now this is the primary focus for day trading because number one, I know all of these are going to be good enough volume. Uh, the daily charts maybe not. If I pull up a daily chart, 800,000 shares, they may not be tradable the opening five minutes of the day. These will pretty much be all be tradable, certainly after a couple of minutes once, once the market is open. So then I go through and I look at these hourly charts. And here I'm looking at something differently. What else does it say on this slide here? Um, universe, 300 stocks. Remove some, boo, boo, boo. Then here, when I'm looking at that hourly list, that when I'm looking at that hourly list right there, I'm looking at it on the four pack of stocks like this. So here we have the, the pertinent time frames. An intraday time frame, 5, 15, whatever you like. 60 minute daily weekly so here they pop up populate all at once i go through the first stock what's on the screen there are qqqs pull up a stock it shows them in all those time frames now here this is what you see me do well those of you in the seminar program i do a night called scanning for day trades and this is where i talk about this more but here's where i, I look at my first focus is the 60 minute chart that's the time frame the parent time frame for day trading if i'm day trading i don't have to be trading off of the 60 minute chart i can but even if I'm a five minute trader, even if I'm a two minute trader, I have to be in sync with the 60 minute chart, meaning I can't be violating it. So the 60 minute chart is always gonna be the basis for day trading, even if you're down to a one minute chart, two minute chart. You could use a 15, really doesn't matter. 
Well, Don, hang on till I'm done, and then I think your question will be a moot point. At this point, no. I'm just, I'm just right now, when I'm doing the daily list or this list, I'm just going through and flagging them. In TC2000, you hit the F key, it just flags it, you know, puts a, puts a check mark by it. Here, I have to go and, and type it in the list. But at this point, I'm just saying interesting. That's all I'm saying. What I'm really doing is I understand that when I'm looking at these, I'm eliminating 97%. I know that. So most every stock I look at is crap. Crap stands for can't recognize a pattern. Most every stock is crap. Matter of fact, I usually am watching TV when I do this. I'm doing something else. I, I'm just because even in that half a second, when I remember when I'm doing these, I'm doing this on my platform. And the platform I use to do all my evaluation is, is a trade station. And this is slow. So when, when I change these stocks, it takes like a full second, second and a half. I don't know. I get bored in that one second. So I'm watching TV while I do this sometime. But all I'm saying here is when, I, when a stock comes up, my instant concept is it's crap. And unless it proves to me instantly, there's something special about it. Again, what's special? Well, I got to see something technically to me that makes it stand out, right? That makes it something that I know for right now in my trading experience, in my background, in my expertise, in the market we're in today, with the, with the market did, doing what it did today or yesterday, that I know what I'm looking for, okay? So I go through these and I go through the 300 stocks. So that's number two is an hourly list. So daily charts, 800, 1100 daily charts, 300 hourly charts. And then that's pretty much what I do at night or early in the morning to prepare for the day, day, day trading. When eight o'clock comes around, then the next thing I factor in are the gap lists. Things that are gapping up that morning, once I see the gaps, typically, you know, you get a more accurate gap after eight o'clock, 8.30. I'm usually goofing around at eight o'clock. Typically, I'm not looking at the gap list till 8.30. And then from 8.30 to 9, I take a first run through the gap list. And again, here it's a little different. Gapping stocks are different critters. They're different strategically than other things you look at in the chart. So here I'm looking for something different. I go through a whole bunch of gaps. And again, same kind of criteria. Most of the gaps I look at are crap. I don't care about them. Those gaps to me that are what I would call a ranking of at least a tier three. If there's some chance that I could see a, a conceptual strategy, I'll put it on the list. Because again, these are just my big lists. So maybe this will help you tie it all together. Is this the next one here? Oh, time up. From the hourly list, remember the hourly list? If you want to do something faster, what you can do, I have a page set up like this, and I, I have my hourly list in there. And one nice thing about TradeStation is that when you have like a bunch of charts like this, you can link them all together. And just by hitting five enter, it'll change all of these charts from five minute to, to 15 to 60 to daily, whatever you want to change them to. So one thing you can do is you can put if you want to, all of your hourly chart watches, all of your, not watches, all your hourly chart universe, you can put that on pages if you want. So th this here, uh, every, this is a three monitor layout. Every monitor is holding 30 charts, six by five. So there's 90. So if you had three pages, you could put all, you know, 270 charts on three pages. And the advantage here is, especially if you have a slow platform and, and clicking on stocks is very slow to bring up a, a, a new chart every time. Here you could look at all your charts very quickly. When they're sitting here and the charts are already done, I could look at those 90 charts in probably 10 to 15 seconds. Maybe if I took my time, 30 seconds. So if you went through three pages of that, in two minutes you'd be done looking at all those, those charts. The disadvantage here is that you're looking at just that one time frame again right? Like I do with the daily charts. And what you're going to miss then is what you would pick up looking at this. So after you do that, you then still have to look and verify the other time frames. I'm talking fairly quickly. I'm talking to you like you're a seminar student. I'm talking like you know what you're talking about. So please, if you have a question, let me know. Because I do want to kind of get through all this, right? Do, do you do these during the day in the five minutes? Um, John, I, this is what I pull up. I pulled it up today. As a rule, I don't. But when I have nothing on my list that's working, right? And I say, okay, I want to scan for, and I very rarely scan for something else in the middle of the day. I've learned not to do that. I don't, I'm not against it if you want to. In my younger trading days, I used to do that. I used to like, you know, kind of rescan during the day. I found that to be a neutral activity. I found that to be, you miss, you, 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 you lose as much as you make. I like to find my stuff, trade my morning, 
find out what stuff I'm looking at, may set up in the afternoon and call it a day. Now, like today, I wanted some shorts and nothing I had on the screen. It was either gone or wasn't working or whatever. So I, I pulled this up. And yeah, you see me do that. I have that list on here. And then I look at five or 15 minute charts and see if there's something setting up. And at a glance, then I can see. But you can see like today, I pulled up what six things and I didn't like any of them. It was all just garbage. And you see the problem you have, they were interesting on here, but then when I looked at all the time frames together, they weren't that interesting because you can't tell anything from one time frame. All right, so daily chart, 1100 daily charts, 300 hourly charts. Then the gap list is get close to the open, right? And then I look at the carry list. Now what's the carry list? Do some of you ever have the problem that you, you can't get stocks off your watch list because you're afraid you might miss something? Anybody, give me a number one. This is a common problem I find, and I have it sometimes. Do so you ever have a problem that your list keep growing because you keep saying, oh, I don't want to delete that because maybe tomorrow it'll do something magic, right? Everybody has that, it seems like. Well, here's number one, save the best of the best, get rid of the crap. Just get yourself used to doing that. Focus on the good stuff. Remember, if you start hiring inferior people, your company will suffer, right? If you don't have great qualified candidates, try to wait till you do. If you can't, the more you hire people who don't want to work, the more your company is going to lose productivity. It's the same thing trading. The more you bring in and save crap that's not really right, the more you're watering down your end results. One thing you can do to help for that is create a carry list. So when you have your main lists here, and at the end of the day, you're saying, well, okay, you know, here's some stuff, you know, I didn't, I didn't use it today, but boy, I, I really hate to forget that symbol. It's not gonna be good tomorrow. Well, I throw it on a carry list. And a carry list is just kind of a, a suitcase of trash, you may want to think of it as. Or there are some stocks that legitimately may be good. A lot of times we have like a stock that has a big green bar today, right? And I say, wow, that's very powerful, but I don't want to trade it tomorrow because the odds are tomorrow is going to have a little pullback. So I, I'll put that on the carry list. So use that carry list for any stock. It, usually a lot of gaps end up on there because a lot of times gaps kind of burn themselves out in a day or two and you got to wait for the next pullback. But put that, use that for anything that you think is a, is a stock you really want to hang on to, but it's not going to be valid for a couple of days. So then I'll go through the carry list and make sure and see if there's anything I have on there that's interesting for the current trading day coming up. So here's where it comes together then, right? Are these, let's skip on your, yeah, right here, John, here you go. So here's the summary. And this, by the way, John, this is posted in the trading room and it's sent to you when you, when you first started. So, you know, you're bad if you don't know this because this is, you know, I, I really go through a lot of trouble for everybody in the room and everyone else does to send you all the information. It's posted in the room. It's sent to you by email. I know a lot of people don't look at it, but this is sent to you if you go look. So this is my platform just to show you. Here's the final analysis of what happens. Now, this is just, this is one quarter of one monitor, just to keep this in perspective. You'll see my whole layout in a minute. But this is just one quarter of one monitor. So these are the different lists that end up being created. So up here, it's all key coded. So number one, my daily chart. Number two, a 60-minute chart. Number three, the intraday chart. Uh, number four is a uh, watch list. So number four is going to be my hourly. I've changed this. So yeah. So number four is going to be based on my hourly list. So that when I when I scan those 300 hourly charts, right, and then I find 10 or 15 that I want to save, here's the land up. So there, number four, that's my hourly list right there. Okay. Number five. Uh, and six, remember the 1,100 stocks I scanned on dailies? Well, here they are, bullish and bearish. Five is the bullish daily, six is the bearish dailies, okay? Seven then is the hot list. So this becomes the summary. So in the morning, and then I do this part, last part with the trading room members, I go through and I take the, the hourly charts, the daily charts, and the gap lists that are down here. Number eight is the gap list up, gap list down. And I synthesize it all and say, okay, Based on all of these lists, here are my favorites. Now, remember, these lists started with probably 1,600 stocks, total, 1,100 dailies, 300 hourlies, maybe a couple hundred miscellaneous and gaps, whatever. And it's brought down then to these lists, which are probably, say, 20, 20, 20, maybe 50, 60 stocks here on the daily, hourly, and gaps. And then it, it boils down to 10 stocks, maybe. That's my hot list. That's what I want to be looking at for that opening hour, the opening minutes, okay? And then um, 10 is the carry list. No, 10 is the carry list here, Davis. See down here, so eight and nine. Eight, eight, eight and nine is the gap up list and gap down list. 
That should be a nine here, I guess, sorry. But eight, eight is the gap up list, nine is the gap down list, okay? Oh yeah, look at that gap. <laughs> SYMC. <laughs> this is from a long time ago. Uh, I, I stole this. Um, I stole this slide from uh, again with the email that you guys get when you come into the room or what's posted in the room. So there's how I get organized. Okay, that's what I do: day trading, starting with daily, hourly gaps, gap carries to synthesize it and boil it all down. Now, how long does all that take me? Trading on my own without a trading room, all, I, I would do, that, that is what I would do. When I trade on my own, if there's no trading room involved, it's just me going to trade, this is what I would still do. I would do nothing different. I would end up with this you're looking at right here. I would end up with exactly this. And that whole process would take me 30 minutes, probably 20 minutes for the daily and hourly charts and 10 minutes for the gaps. Now, in earnings season, maybe a little longer for the gaps. During non-earnings season, gaps could take me two or three minutes. But on average, 10 minutes to look at 1,100 daily charts, 10 minutes to look at 300 hourly charts, um, 10 minutes to look at the gaps, okay? Now, since I run a trading room, I take a little extra time, and I send this out to everybody, so it takes me some extra time. And let's talk about time it takes you. Now, I'm fast at doing this, obviously. Some of you are fast. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying I'm fast. When you're newer, what I suggest you do is not to try and look at as much I do and sit there for hours. It's, it's, it's futile and you burn yourself out looking at too much stuff. What I suggest you do is cut down on your universe to start with. You don't have to be looking at that much stuff necessarily. I do, uh, to some extent, you know, I believe the kind of the bigger the funnel at the top, uh, the better the quality at the bottom, but there's a limit to that. But believe it or not, you have to do some scanning, but believe it or not, I've run statistics on this with myself over the years. And the days when I call, I'm winging it. Some of you know in the room, I say I'm winging it. I, I actually arguably do the same or better when I wing it. In other words, I just pull up at nine o'clock. All right, what do we got? Look at the leftover crap. Look at the gaps. Go, let's do something. Because to some extent, it, there's a fine line there between you know, let's say, I, let's say I do a real quick scan and I find 10 things I like, right? Well, one argument would be, and I agree with this argument, if I did twice as much scanning, maybe I'd find 15 stocks I like, right? So in that additional five, there may be the trade of the day that I missed. But you know what else it could be? That stupid little thing distracts me from the trade of the day in my original list. You follow what I'm saying? It's, it's just kind of a very non-mathematical concept, but I see that happen a lot. And end of the day, you know what? You, you, you don't have to, you just need to find a couple good symbols, day trading. It's all you really have to do. All right, questions on this. So don't burn yourself with trying to go through that much. Maybe, maybe just find your 300 and go through them on, you know, all the time frames at once, whatever. And like I explained, some of our people, let me do this real quick. Ron, I'm, you know, one of the biggest believers that, you know, keeping it simple. Um, I, I am. My, my, the other half of that statement that I think is critical, though, is before you make it simple, you have to make it complicated first. In other words, to keep something simple, you can't start, you cannot start off simple. Agree? You can't start off simple. You have to start off at the top, complicated, doing everything, and then boil your way down, synthesize it down to what is simple, because then you're doing the right things. Otherwise, you don't know what you're doing. So you have to make it simple. Once, once you start doing, by doing everything. A, a key to scanning, ma many of you, and again, I'm not bragging because many of you can do what I do, but I, I always get the question, how can you look at three stocks per second? The reason is because eventually as a trader, you end up looking for pictures of what you want. You look for pictures. I want to take just two minutes and do, I did this, I know, with the seminar people the other day, but I haven't done this in a free event in a long time. Something I, I don't know, I came across maybe 10 years ago that I never realized. Do you know that your mind only thinks in pictures? Yes or no, are you guys aware of that? Not that you can think in pictures. Everybody knows you can think in pictures. I'm saying your mind can only think in pictures. There is no other option for your mind other than to think in pictures. When you think about that, that's really a critical key thing. I can prove that to you with two questions real simple. Number one, we'll kind of prove it. It's 5.30, what are you guys doing for dinner tonight? What did you just do? Did you have words appear in your head mind? Did you have binary code? No, you pictured your dinner table or your local restaurant 
whatever you're doing, right? Here's the ultimate, the ultimate proof that your mind thinks in pictures. You ready for this? No matter what, as a matter of fact, under the penalty of cutting off your left arm, do not, in the next 10 seconds, do not think of a pink elephant. What just happened? I guarantee you, you all pull up a picture of a pink elephant. Your mind cannot work in any other way. So what becomes critical as a trader is that you have to learn to see the pictures of charts that you want, right? And the example I love to use all the time, and there's a little thing I did for the seminar people about taking an alien to the zoo. But basically, if, if you weren't from this planet, right, and I asked you to go find a tiger, right, and I gave you a description of a tiger, just like I might give you a description of a chart pattern, right? Look for it above the rising 20, above the rising 40, look for this, look for that, look for this, look for that, right? You'd have this whole checklist of things you have to do to find a chart, right? Just like an alien coming to this planet, if you gave him a checklist to go find a tiger and he went to the zoo, he'd have to look at this checklist. And your checklist, maybe it starts off, okay, it walks on all fours, it has a tail, it has two ears and big fangs. And he comes back with a mountain lion, right? And you say, wait a minute, what are you, stupid, Mr. Alien? That's, that's not a tiger, that's a mountain lion. Oh, I didn't put enough information, right? But then to, to bring this all home for you is if, if I gave you, a, if I gave any one of you a picture book, like a kid's picture book of animals, right? And I said, thumb through that until you find a tiger. How long would you have to look at a van? How long would you have to look at every picture to find a tiger? How many seconds? What fraction of a second would you need to thumb through the pages and say, no, 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 no. That's a monkey. That's a swan. That's a lizard. Blah, blah, blah. There it is. Right, right. You could look at as fast as you could turn the page, right? Well, that's what looking at charts is like for me. Just like the alien would look at you and say, how could you possibly go through that book that fast? Here's the list I'm looking for. It has four legs, a main, you know. So it's the same thing. It, it's the same thing. You got to learn to find those pictures. So until you do that, don't burn yourself out. Just get a smaller list and just find a handful of good things, right? Right, ex exactly, John, yeah, exactly. Well, I conquer that by ruling things out, you know, immediately, sort of, right? So anyways, let's continue on here. So for the room, blah, blah, blah. Now, I personally don't rely on computer scanning, right, where you program in and you get a list. I've done that. I still do it. Um, there's two things I will tell you, though. What, what I do have, I have a little tiny scan that runs at the end of the day. And if I want to be lazy one day, some days, you know, when you do the daily charts and you got a lot of stuff and you got a lot of leftovers, and you, you got your hourly list. Some days I don't want to rescan all the daily charts. And I do have a little um, scan that runs at the end of the day that simply pulls out for me um, any bullish wide body bar, red or green, and anything that traded above a bearish wide body bar or trade below a bearish green body bar. So I'll end up with a handful of things that sometimes I add to my to my list, but that's not my total scan. That's just something to pull out because when I'm because on that I'll go down a little bit lower in volume. So that's something else you can do also is if you wanted to run a simple scan to find some things and maybe you go down really low in volume. So maybe you scan 2000 charts for a daily uptrend but then you pull out 300 of your favorite stocks or your top volume stocks to look at for every other pattern you may have, okay? If you want a simple lazy man scan for swing trading or for really for any time frame, um, something that works really well, for example, is you can just run a simple scan. You program in, and when I say program, a lot of these things you're not programming, you just click, you know, current price above the 20, 20 above the 40 today, and then the same thing, current price above 20, above 40, 30 bars ago or 30 days ago, current price above 20, about 40, 60 days ago or 60 bars ago. And you'll find beautiful uptrends and very simply doing that. That doesn't mean that there are trades. It doesn't mean that they're longs. You have to know to identify when an uptrend may be ending, when it may be extended, when you're in the sweet spot, but it will pull out uptrends. And maybe out of 2000 stocks, it'll pull up 120 uptrends and 40 downtrends or whatever. And then you can scan those. So there's some different ways you can slice the cake here if you want to, right? What else? We're still on the day trading part of it. Oh, and like I said, that, that whole process takes me a half hour. And, and that's really even including, you know, getting ready for the room. But if, if you're taking, and I, you shouldn't take a whole lot more time than that. Now, initially when you're learning, part of that prep time is learning time, right? You're learning. You're not just prepping, you're learning. So don't feel bad if, if you spend 60, 90 minutes prepping, if in that prepping, you're also teaching yourself, you're learning this stuff, right? But something you can save time on 
is by not wasting your time doing things you don't need to do, okay? You don't need to listen to the news. You don't need to read any earnings reports. You don't need to look up any com company's fundamentals. You don't need to listen to any financial shows. Now, as a human being, I want to know what's going on in the world, so I listen to the news. And as a human being, I also want to just hear what's going on in the financial world. Keep in mind, I am not influenced by that. As a matter of fact, I make fun of them and I mock what they're saying 90% of the time. When you can do that, feel free. But until, make sure you're not influenced by what they say. I've gone through this before. I'm not going to do it here, but I explain to people why the financial shows make themselves sound like they're telling you accurate things and why what they said is true, but it's never true. It's, it's always the case that they are just simply making up the reason why something happened that day. They make it sound like that's the reason, but it's not. So you will only get confused and distressed trying to read and understand earnings, fundamentals, news, financial shows. So just do not listen to them until your trading day is over. Listen at the end of the night if you want to know what's going on in the world and, and, and take it with a grain of salt to say the least until you can look and just kind of laugh at what they're saying sometimes because they, they are talk show hosts. They're not really giving you pertinent information. So be careful of that. And that'll save you time. I bring that up because, you know, people send me trading plans. And out of non-DTS students, and in other words, anybody a DTS student, I don't think anybody would dare put it in there, but non-DTS students is people who are sending me a plan for me to look at for fun. I would say half of them start their day with a very important process of listen to the news, go to this website, read the company earnings report, but all this crap. And I'm like, boy, if you do that, you're never going to make money, I guarantee you. Another important one, part of your prep process, is to have a market bias. Now, if you're trading the market, obviously you have a market bias because that's what you're trading, right? But if you're trading stocks, you also want to have kind of a, a back burner under the table subliminal bias as to whether you think things are, are heading higher or lower in general for the day, over multiple days, for that part of a day, and when the strike times are. Now, I did, I've done even free presentations that talk about, as a matter of fact, it was recently, it was about three presentations back, I did a presentation called When to Act as a Day Trader Swing Trader, and it talked about how you look at the market every day and decide, should I be getting in short or long right out of the open this morning, or should I be waiting till 10 or 10.30 or noon to strike? So you have to have that all figured out too, because that will greatly increase your odds if you can do that. Again, that all relies on your technical skills. I, I'm, today, I'm not talking at all about technical skills. I'm assuming you have them all, and I'm trying to pull together for you how to be organized and prepare for the day or for the week, whatever, whatever it is you're doing. Let me focus on this last comment here, the difference between thinking and writing. I encourage all of you that day trade to do what I have to do, and that is to write a newsletter to yourself or send it to a friend. Write a quick little market commentary for the day. Capture a chart, put it in PowerPoint, do like I do, put little lines on it up and down, where you think support, and, and decide for you. Because I have to tell you, you know, most of my trading career, I've been writing something for people. And for a period of time, right before DTS, for about a year, I wasn't. And I started doing it again, because I realized that just looking at a chart and thinking what my market bias is, was gravely different sometimes than if you actually put pen to paper and think about it. And I see that a lot of times when I'm writing the letter I do every day for the people who subscribe to it. A lot of times I'll be like kind of from the prior day and I glance at things in the morning and say, okay, you know, here's what I think. And then when I pull up the charts, I mark them up and start writing about it and justifying it. You know, I sometimes go, wait a minute, you know what? That's not really right. I don't think I want to short that early. I think we got to wait. So it's amazing how, again, it's kind of that difference between just, again, the C student who just says, oh yeah, we're, we're bullish, everything's up. And the A plus student who says, wait a minute, we may be up, but you know what? We're going to drop this morning like a rock, I guarantee you. So that's the difference. And having that market bias is a key thing. Day trading, and it's also very key long-term. Something I suggest that people do long-term, I don't have a slide for it on the next section for long-term, so I'm going to mention it here. Do the same thing long-term. Sit down and write 
a thesis for me, for yourself, for me, whatever, about where you think the market will be in two years. It's useless, it's meaningless, but it helps pull out a possible market bias. And then after you write that, then take out a chart and mark it up and justify what you just said. Take out all the charts, take out monthly charts, weekly charts, daily charts, and justify that you think in two years, we're gonna be 20% higher than we are right now, or whatever you think it is. Justify it on the chart. It's an amazing little exercise. And then the next step, of course, is to do what I do when I write letters for long-term positions, is that once you have the kind of bias in your head, now you have to justify it on a bar by bar, day by day, week by week basis to say, is this confirming what my thesis is? Or is it negating it? And where are the focal areas that would prove or disprove what I think? I just said a mouthful of garbage there, but actually it is what I do. I didn't really think about it that way, but it is what I do, which is, which is the scientific process, right? Thesis, take a step toward it, prove or disprove, move forward, move back, right? So if you were on your own day trading, I, everything I've said up to this point should be just part of your routine that you do every single day. It shouldn't take you that long. You shouldn't be day trading more than 90 minutes a day, 30 minutes of prep. Guess what? You have a two hour work day and you're done. Go golf. A couple of useful sites for you if you want. I, I just said you don't look at earnings, you don't read, but I do want to know oftentimes what stocks are doing earnings because number one, I don't like to trade a stock day trade that's going to do earnings that night or the next day because they act kind of wonky, so I don't want to trade. And number two, there's other reasons you may want to know when earnings are coming because if you're swing trading or long-term trading, you don't want to take a position, hold it on right, it's about to do earnings. So you want to know when earnings are coming. Uh, you may want to use your earnings list as kind of a, a backup to looking for gaps that next day. You may want to know what economic numbers are coming out the next day not to read them, not to listen to them, not to care about them at all, but some numbers really move the market. And if you're day trading, you may want to know Friday 945, we're getting the uh, consumer confidence number or the Michigan sentiment number, and that tends to move the market. So just know that you could get a market move at that time. It may or may not affect what you're doing. Okay. So there's a bunch of um, sites. You know what? I can, I don't, you can't click on those the way I did it, but let me so, so I'll just put, post them in here so if you want to take these. And again, this is no rocket science. You can go find these. But I did take a lot of time finding these sites because there's something good about each one. The first one there, you can pick a date range. So if you want to look for earnings next week, uh, you can set the calendar to next week and it'll show you the earnings. If you skip down to the bottom one, the NASDAQ earnings, that I like because it separates earnings tonight after market from earnings tomorrow before market. So if you care about when the earnings are coming, that separates them. So that's nice for that. And then econ reports. I like the market watch econ reports, very clear, concise. You can copy and paste them to something else real nice. And then if you see, I, I talk to people in gap class, that if you see a gap, um, we don't really want to trade it if it's a dividends gap. But then I say, I don't want you to look at the news. So what do you do? Well, here's a, a, a page of dividend gaps where you can just kind of quickly um, go day by day, and if you have your gap list, just quickly check and see if any of your stocks are gapping due to dividends. I don't think that's a big deal. It doesn't hurt to trade the dividend gap. You're just not going to get the move that you think you're going to get probably. All right? So there, again, is a bunch of stuff. Organization is key. I can't stress that enough. That's my trading platform. That is, I use, um, I have two computers. One is just for personal stuff. One's for trading. My trading computer is four monitors and you're looking at three of the four monitors. Um, like one, two, three. The one to the left is for the trading room for other platforms. This is the only platform I keep charts up on. Other platforms I have just order execution, but this is the only, this is the only platform for um, charting. But this is not what you want to do. You have to get organized in a way you think makes sense, but some tips for you. I would suggest that on every wherever you are, that you have your main layout. That's my four main time frames where I look to evaluate a stock, okay? Down here is the market. This is also part of the four main time frames up above. These are all those watch lists. Remember you saw a snippet here? You were seeing these watch lists right here. Remember that I said, here's a quarter of one monitor. That's what you were seeing was right there. So there's all the watch lists right there. Um, here I have some, you know, account stuff and um, 
level two is a couple of those things there. And then here, I, I well, that's just a scan. I don't even have that up anymore. Uh, and then these are kind of like the hot stocks. These are things that I'm looking to get into or am in and actively managing. And then we have the hot list area. This this 10 pack right here are the things every morning that I'd be most focused on getting into immediately. Does that's when we're you know trading in the room and here's here's where I put that. And then the intermediate list of the things that are back up to the hot list and then the back burner stocks. So number one, it's organized from left to right, right? Top focus, medium focus, back burner, right? And then also I have it, me, and again, I'm, I'm giving you personal preferences slash ideas. You don't have to do any of this. You don't have to trade. But I, I have organized this way that top row are watch list items that I want to trade bullishly on strength. The next row are watch list items I want to trade bullishly on a decline, on a pullback. Reverse that at the bottom. Bearish trades on weakness, bearish trades on a rally. And the middle row is from miscellaneous, well, the hot list is hot list. Usually that's bearish in there. And then the middle row is from miscellaneous stuff. Um, the, the, big, uh, the big gap up that I want to run up for, for 30 minutes, wherever it is. So that's just a miscellaneous area. Which windows are linked for quick changes? Um, all, all the thumbnails are linked together time-wise. So if I, so like I start off with one minute charts, cause you know, I'm not a scalper, but what are you gonna look at at 9.30 in the morning, right? So we have one minute charts up. And then these will progress, you know, from two to three to five to eight. And you know, by the afternoon they're 10 or 15. Basically, John, when the, the pattern run starts to run, when I get about three quarters of the way to the, you know, like a one minute chart gets three quarters of the way to going off the screen on the left, I go to a two minute chart. And just keep doing that, you know, until I, you know, until I'm done trading, whatever. And then over here, th these are linked by symbol. So when I click on a symbol, when I click on a symbol on any list, it populates all of this. So any watch list item I have, click, 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 evaluate it, hot list, boom, put on a hot list chart, boom. And that's why I can sit there during the trading day and tell the hilarious jokes that I tell all day long and then all of a sudden go, oh, wait a minute, Qualcomm short. Right, because I because I just got a glance at these charts. Right, what's stupidity to me? Stupidity to me is keeping a big watch list that has 17 columns in it. The bid, the offer, that's very important to have on a watch list. Da 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 da. The uh, the high the high of the day, the low of the day, uh, the uh, the the VWAP. Uh, blah blah blah, and have this big watch list, and I keep clicking on things. So that that's stupidity to me. That does that's I don't have that. You notice my watch list? They have no columns at all. Dave, you're just joking. I know most of the days you miss trades because you're laughing so hard you can't even find the mouse. I understand that. I I don't want any columns really. This platform won't allow you to have only a symbol, so I have to have a second column, and I put percent change in the day, whatever. But all I want is a list. I, that's all I want. I don't want anything else because you can't tell anything looking at lists. I want to look at the chart. So you put them on thumbnail charts. So this is a four monitor layout. There's, it's a three monitor layout out of a four monitor computer. If you were to give me you know, two more monitors, I would just stack two more monitors up here with thumbnails. That's all I would do, just put up more thumbnails. I don't really need to, or I'd put them up there, but all right. Whew, boy, what an idiot I am. I thought I was gonna be done quickly. So that little area there, so that's what I showed you, and that's right here. So there it is blowing up right there. No, I don't, I don't use a matrix now. I'm just kind of old school. I have little, the little order entry boxes up. The, the reason, John, is because, you, you know, in the morning I'm looking at five or six things. So I just pull up five or six little order execution boxes and get them all set with a symbol, long or short, stop, boom, boom, boom. And then I just have to maybe change the share size, man, on the stop, and boom, boom, boom. So I just like to do that. All right, man, preparing for long-term trading investing. This will go a lot quicker because there's not a lot new here. It's kind of right. It's kind of, we're doing the same process, but it's simpler, less complicated. And also you're not doing it as often. So I look at the same 800 to 1100 charts. Remember from the first half of this, I look at the same charts, but I look at them weekly. And then two to three times a month, I'll drop the volume down to about 500K volume requirement, which makes it about 1800 stocks. 
And that's about as, as low as I go, four or 500K. You know, if you're longer term, you can go down easily to 400K because, you know, you're, you're, you're taking longer term positions. The stops are bigger. You, you know, if you got a $2 stop, you don't need 4,000 shares, 8,000 shares. You're, you know, you're doing smaller volume. So you, you can go down a lot lower. Um, I use the same four pack of charts, except if you look, it's kind of funny. D just change the five minute to a monthly. So instead of going around the horn five minutes, 60 daily, weekly, now we have 60 daily, weekly, monthly, and it works out just nice. So I'm actually using, I actually put these slides in here. I'm not real sure why, but I'm actually using, oh, where are they? There we go. My long-term page looks like that. I, I have my four pack of charts with the monthly here. And then off to the right, I have my list. Now I go through the list and now here what I do is I just simply save bullish, bearish, and then as day by day as I go through these, remember these are long-term positions. So I'm not entering these every day. These are things where I wanna keep these lists in front of me because of one morning I decide, you know what? I need a short, mark is just right, boom, boom, boom. I, I wanna have things right at my fingertips. So I have these lists in front of me, I'll update them a couple times a week. And then I, I always, whenever I'm interested in, in taking a position, I'll, I'll create a hot list. And that's just going through these two lists and just saying, hey, what could be good to enter right now or tomorrow, you know, what's ready to go. So there's the long-term page and then there's my hourly page. It's just, and literally this is one, one page. This is in the middle on the left, I have my hourly chart and then I just switch five to hourly and then boom, boom, there we are. Switch the five minute chart to monthly and, and there we go. And then lastly, I have a page set up for sectors. Long-term sectors are important. They're important because big money moves in sectors. They don't move in individual stocks. So here I have a page set for sector that keeps the key 16 sectors. And again, these pages you can change from weekly to, to daily or even down to hourly if you wanted to and see where the money's flowing so that you can look as a longer term trader, swing trader, what sector maybe should have focus on. And also for the bigger picture, the sectors help to tell you sometimes when the market is topping out if you know what to look for, okay? So do you ever, you, the matrix, okay, do you set weekly and monthly charts to log? No, I don't. I, I, I keep everything to just simple. It, it doesn't matter at all. What's your name? F, I'm just gonna call you one because I can't read the rest of that. But one, I just, it, it does not matter whether you wanna use exponential, logarithmic, simple moving average, none of that matters. What matters is that you just keep it the same all the time so that you're seeing the same picture every time you look at a chart and you're not getting confused and thinking, wow, that chart's really, you know, going climactic. It's really accelerating. And then, oh, we have it on the log chart. It's not. So, you know, just just keep the same, the same look, whatever you do. We had this debate with somebody who said, shouldn't you look at a log chart because it's more realistic? Now, the log chart is actually the fake one. The real chart is the real one, the, you know, using simple moving averages is the real, the, the, the log chart is the one that is going to skew or deviate what you're looking at. I don't have a problem with that just so that you know to look at the same chart every time, okay? Other questions? Oh, you have a lot, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, the, the, uh, after the top eight or so. Well, you know why too? Because included in the sectors, I have things that are nice sectors. I have the volatility index in here, the QQQ and the SPY. I have the XLF, the GDX, um, I have the USO, I'm typing these, XLE, Energy, um, Gold, XRT, Retail, XLK, is Tech, X, XLV, oh, I'm typing some of these wrong, SLK, I typed SLK because that's a Mercedes, XLK, XLV, um, OIH, which is another oily thing. IBB, which is biotech, SMH, which is the semiconductor, that's always an important one. Um, the ITA is the aerospace, I think, the VCR, MXK, materials, XLU, utilities. And I have the EEM, and I know I have EEM, it's emerging markets, maybe I just stuck them in there to fill out the page. So there's kind of the key ones, okay. Wow, it's 6.01 and I actually am done, but I went through this, I didn't ask questions, I didn't, you know, so let me know if you have any questions on anything. It's officially 6.01, but I will hang around for whatever you need.
questions. I went through a lot of stuff here. And again, if you didn't hear my opening comments, you know, I'm just showing you what I do. So it's subjective. But it, hopefully you got a lot of good ideas out of this. Yes. Uh, maybe some things to think about, some additional things to do, some ways to be organized. Whatever you do, though, every, you know, organization, I think, is a very personal thing to everybody. But you've got to be very organized. You know, you, you, you have to be. You guys in the trading room know. I mean, you see me every day. I'm, you know, going through all the stuff and trading, posting the trades, keeping up all you guys. I mean, all you have to do is enter. I'm doing three times the work you are. So you just got to be very organized to do it. That's all. Be able to see these things. And But even long term, I'm not just saying like day trading. If you want to take a gap at 931, of course, you have to be organized. But even longer term, you have to be organized. You know, you have to always be on top uh, of what it is you want to be doing, what you need, when the right timing is, and have those 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 lists available to you. Any questions? You're welcome, John. Anything else? Looks like we're good. Nobody's typing. All right. Those in the trading, we'll see you tomorrow. Otherwise, we'll see you next. I don't even know when the next event is. We'll see you whenever. Check out the free stuff page. Have a good night. Come join us in the trading room when you're done with your vacation in August. See you all.